You ready? Come on. When night has fallen, fear is calming. Still you're calling me. When faith is lost, hope exhausted. You will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I've decided I'm not giving up, cause you won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. Your love is holding on to me, won't let go.
emotions when you pull me close. No, I won't resist it. Here is all my love. It's yours. No conditions when you pull me close. No, I won't resist it. Here is all my love. It's yours. No conditions when. Doesn't make sense. We'll never comprehend the way you love us. It's unthinkable. Only ever know just how far you go. To say you love us. To say you love us. To say you. It's extravagant. It doesn't make sense. We'll never comprehend the way you love us. It's unthinkable. Only heaven knows just how far you go to say you love us. know that he loves us. Yes. Come on, let me hear. You believe that this morning? You know, we're going to open up for a special time of prayer right now. I'm going to ask our prayer team if you guys can go ahead and come up. You know, I can't, I don't think I can ever reiterate just how important these moments are. You don't have to walk through whatever you're walking through right now alone. And maybe that's just the simplest way I can put it. You're not alone because God is with you, but I want to remind you here that we have people. We have, what, we want to be your family. We are your family. And we want to walk through whatever you're going through right now, right with you. We want to join our faith to yours and believe that this isn't where you die. That this isn't where the story ends. That God's written a better ending in Jesus' name. So whatever you might be going through this morning, I just invite you, go ahead and come up because we want to believe with you that there is hope that your, first, that your faith can be renewed this morning. All right? Come on, let's just believe that as we go into this next one. Fullness of eternal promise is stirring in your sons and daughters Earth revealing heaven's wonders children shall be
do anything without His Spirit. It's the energy that we need. It's the fire that we needed here, that the tongues of fire that we're talking about, that we're singing about. That's what gives us the fire to do what we need to do. Because how many of you know we haven't been called to just sit on the sidelines? We haven't been called to just fill a seat, guys. We've been called with a mission and with a purpose. And that's when you need that tongue of fire, that fire in your bones that you just can't shut up. It's burning in here because it needs to get out there. So I just want to encourage you to, as we continue on this morning, Spirit come, a constant prayer, Spirit come. Lord, we invite you this morning that your Spirit would come into each and every one of us, Lord, that we would know you in a way we haven't known you before. Father, that we might see you more clearly, that we might hear your voice and know it. And Father, that our hearts might respond for those that know you and those that might be far from you this morning. I just pray that your spirit would come all the same. Oh, your spirit come, spirit come. Oh, spirit come. Spirit come. the king of my heart be the mountain where i run the fountain i drink from oh he is my song and let the king of my heart be the shadow where i hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song because you are good you're good, oh, and you are good, you're good, oh, and let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song, and let the king of my heart be the fire We're gonna sing that again. And let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. And let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my song. And you are. You are good. 
the picture that this song gives us. That you are the fountain that I drink from. How many of you have ever been to the mountains before? So like when you're in the mountains, sometimes you get up to a peak and, and you might, I was thinking about Pikes Peak. We went to Pikes Peak last year. And you go up to Pikes Peak in Colorado, you've got this view of everything. Oh, we love being able to see everything, don't we? We love seeing what's coming tomorrow. It gives us a sense of control. But the valleys are not as much fun. You see, everybody else is higher than you. One of the things that I noticed though was that there's a lot more life in the valleys than there are on the mountaintops. And you would hit levels where the trees would cut off, the grass would cut off, then the trees would cut off, then, and by the time you got to the peak, it was lonely up there. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's not moments for the mountaintop, but most of our lives, we find ourselves in the valley wishing we had, wishing we were somewhere else. But what I love about the valley moments is that where, that's where God can be our fountain. The Bible says this in Isaiah 41. When the poor and the needy search for water and there is none, and their tongues are parched from thirst, then I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will never abandon them. I will open up rivers for them on high plateaus. I will give them fountains of water in the valleys. I will fill the desert with pools of water. Rivers fed by springs will flow across the parched ground, and I will plant, plant, I will plant trees in the barren desert. I love this perspective because sometimes you feel like a barren desert. Sometimes you feel like I'm in the valley and I wish I was up there. But when you're in the valley is whenever we are in most need for God. And I, we're in the position where God can fill us. We're in a position where God can be a fountain to us. Sometimes we're on the mountaintop. When we're up there, we think we don't need him as much. But the fountain's not a, the valley's not necessarily a bad thing if we let him be the fountain that he wants to be for us. I, I just believe that today that somebody is in a valley. There's been seasons, I've been recently walking through valley seasons. But in those valley seasons, we need to trust God that he can be our fountain, that he wants to be the fountain. So this morning, I believe he wants to do that. So I want us to do something just for a moment. We're gonna sing, you'll never let me down again. I'm gonna do that part again. And I want you to, if you're in the, if you're in the valley today, trust him to be your fountain right now. He wants to pour out his spirit on you. He wants to refresh you. He wants this new, whenever we were singing that last song, we just got the picture of the new of fresh oil being poured into a jar. Let the fresh anointing of God fill you today. Let him be your fountain as we sing this. So no matter what valley you're facing, let's trust God as our fountain, amen? Let's sing that again right now. It will never let us down. church lord jesus we thank you that you are our fountain in the valley that when it seems like we'd rather be somewhere else and we don't know why we're here but you meet us right there you bring everything that we need and we thank you that right now in the valleys that we're in we pray that you bring rivers of living water bringing growth and bringing everything that we need in the season i pray we don't miss the reason we're here i pray we don't miss the reason but instead we let the fountain of the holy spirit pour into our life and bring forth a new life but we embrace where we are right now because we know that you're with us 
and we trust you over where we over what we can see we trust the name of Jesus above everything else it's in Jesus name we said amen amen come on man let's praise Jesus one more time hey thank you for coming to Anchor Chapel today today's Mother's Day happy Mother's Day so we know all the moms in the room, man. We just want you to feel special. Today is a day where we celebrate you and all the moms who are hoping to be moms. We're praying for you. And if you if you checked us out online today, maybe you're just watching online. We're so glad that you tuned in today and that you're watching. But we'd love for you to meet us right here at 1030 a.m. on any Sunday morning. Why don't you guys say hello? Does anybody joining us online this morning? Just want to say welcome home. Glad you guys are here today. If you're here for maybe the first time or second time, you haven't really connected with anybody yet, your first step to connection is to fill out that card that's right in front of you on the seat back in front of you. It just says, we want to connect with you. And what that is, is it's our opportunity to reach out to you and say, hey, this is who we are. We just want to let you know that we're here for you. We're your family. So if you haven't filled out one of those, let make sure that you fill out one. Make sure that you let us know who you are. Say hello. Give us your name or your number, your email address, whatever you're comfortable with. We're not going to hound you, but we are going to follow up and say, hey, we're here for you. We love you and we care for you. Just want you to know that you have somebody here in the city. Um, also, if you are part of the church and you aren't yet connected in anchor groups, man, that is really where discipleship and growth really happens. And I'm not, I'm not like downplaying Sundays. Sundays are awesome. I love our Sunday experiences. But if you're not a part of an anchor group, you're missing out. I promise you. That's where you grow in relationship with people. That's where you're challenged in your faith. So connect in an anchor group today. You can go to anchorchapel.com uh, slash groups and find a group there that's going to be just right for you. Or you can just go to the connection desk in the back. When While you're back there, if you have a, a, a connection card and you give that to them, they have a free gift for you today just to say thank you for coming this morning. So, hey, we're going to uh, we're gonna go into something really awesome in a second. Brooke is going to be bringing the word today. Why don't y'all give it up for Brooke? I can't wait for that. I always love whenever she preaches. Before that, why don't you take about 30 seconds, say hello to somebody, give somebody a high five, and then we'll see what's up here at Anchor Chapel in Anchor Life. Good morning, and welcome to Anchor Chapel. Happy Mother's Day. We're so good that you're with us, and today's going to be an awesome day. Here's what's happening in Anchor Chapel. Check it out. <laughs> we the week Anchor I was ready to see you know. Are we done? Are we done? So check it out. The little bus staff. Go and tell you I done. Hey, Anchor Chapel. Community really matters over here. <sighs> we want you to join an anchor group. Because that's where you get to make great friends and know God. So go to anchorchapel.com and get in a group today. Can I go home now? I will tell you a new church. There are three ways to get a mine in the box of my text. They hear it sweaty. Where's Judah? Thanks, Angel Chapel. They ask that. Yeah, that's it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what's happening here at church. Mm -hmm. Mom, guess what? I caught a fish this big. We'll see you next week. Well, good morning, church. I just love those videos. It doesn't. It never gets old to me. Kid videos are so awesome. Happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. Um, I'm so honored to be able to speak to you this morning. This is kind of the thing um, that I tend to speak on Mother's Day, but I love it, and it's and it's an honor and a pr privilege for me. Um, I know that there's some of you, and I don't want to look over that, that are in the process of waiting for your promise, that you are... Um, you're wanting a child and you've been praying for that and you've been asking for that and you're believing for that. And I just want you to know that we stand by you. Yeah. We stand with you and we believe that at just the right time, at just the right time, that God will fulfill his promises. We believe that and I am, my life is a testament to that, a testimony to God's faithfulness and his power. So let me just, um, many of you know me 
but there are some of you that don't know everything about me. And uh, well, this morning, I'm not telling you everything about me, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about me as a mom. So Josh and I have been married for 19 and a half years. Um, yeah. We, um, we're going on 20. We're super excited about that. We're going on an anniversary trip this summer, so I'm really looking forward to that. But it's been awesome. But for 13 of those years, we didn't have kids. And for many of those 13 years, we were praying and, and asking God to give us a child. And, and um, it was just, it's been a big part of our journey. And so if you're in that waiting process, I know what that feels like. I'm very acquainted with with the feelings and the emotions um, and the testing that comes through that process. And I never, ever want to overlook that because I know it's very real and it's, it's, it's very powerful. But God is faithful. So we, um, 13 years into our marriage, we just decided, God had put, um, just planted a seed of um, love for adoption in my heart, really, probably as a teenager. And so we just began exploring that option and said, Lord, what do we, what do, we do? Um, because I was struggling with infertility. Um, but I really, it, it didn't matter to me. I just wanted what God wanted for me. And so we, we decided to begin fostering. And so this is not the case for everyone by any means, but we began fostering our oldest daughter, Brooklyn, and she was five and a half years old, and she had really gone through this horrific life up until this time, just, just a terror. Um, and God just allowed us and gave us the priv privilege of taking her in and just rescuing her. God rescued her. He used us to rescue her. And, um, and so it wasn't an easy road. Foster care is not easy, but it's needed. It's, it's needed, and we need more people to, to step up to the plate and say, I want to do this. I want to rescue. I want to be the hands and feet of Jesus and rescuing kids. And so we went down that road, and we thought we were, Brooklyn would go with other uh, family members. They, they ended up changing their mind and saying, we want Brooklyn to be with you. And so we were able to adopt Brooklyn right as soon as we knew that we were able to adopt Brooklyn, the foster um, care system called us again and said, hey, we have an infant. He's a, he's a preemie and he, he's a little boy and would you like him and would you want to have them? And I said, yes. And I didn't even talk to Josh and I called Josh up right after and I said, they have a baby boy. Can we have him, please, you know? Um, and so, so Judah, um, our youngest, came to live with us. And, and that, you know, we did the whole thing with, with family visitations and the ups and downs and, and not knowing what was going to happen. Um, for me, my perspective was always this child is mine until he's, he or she is not. And so I was going to be their parent for as long as I was able to. And by God's grace and by his providence, we were able to adopt both of our kids. The only two kids that we fostered, we were able to adopt both of them. This is not the case for most people. I know that. But it has been our story. And it's a beautiful story. And so um, I don't know. I think you have pictures of our kids this morning but uh, of their adoptions. But um, Brooklyn was adopted November 24th of 2014. And then Judah was adopted March 4th of 2016. And so we were actually in the middle of planting this church before Judah was adopted. Tell me I'm insane. Um, <laughs> uh, it, w it was crazy. But that's our story. And, and we love it. And I know my story is not the story that everybody has. Each of you, as moms, as, as individuals, do have a different story. And, you know, I know you guys here today are like, okay, what is she going to say that's for me? So I think there will be some nuggets of truth for you men this morning. Um, if nothing else, you'll, you'll grab a hold of something that you can encourage the women in your life with. Um, so that's my story. But this morning, I wanted to do something special and just invite other women to be a part and to share their stories because you may not be able to connect with everything in mind, but I think you'll be able to glean something from some of theirs. So I was able to interview three amazing women. So why don't you take a look at their stories? <laughs> in a different season than I'm in. Um, you have some little ones right now and I'm, I'm beyond that um, 
that stage. Um, I do miss it sometimes. But um, I know you well, but I know everyone listening or watching today doesn't know you well. So why don't you just tell me a little bit about yourself, your family. Okay, my, my name is Devin. Um, I've been married to my husband, Ryan, for nine years. And we have two little ones. We have a son, Sydney, who's 20 months old, and a little girl, Maggie, who is almost three months old. So we are... Um, a busy house. Yes. I don't like everyone, but um. very busy house. So I've been married to Kevin for we're going on nearly 19 years, and uh, we were high school sweethearts. So it's uh, it's just fun uh, just to be with him. And yeah. uh, we've got two daughters. Riley, she is 14. She's in eighth grade, and Michaela is 11, and she's in sixth grade. So we are right in the middle of uh, middle school with the drama, and uh, but there are yes. so many great things about that age too. Right. Right. Awesome. And you work full-time? I do. I work for Atmos Energy. I'm the president of the Louisiana Division, and uh, we provide safe gas services to homes and businesses across the state. I'll just start with my role as a mom. Um, I've got um, a nine-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a newly six-year-old. So when my kids are all spaced two years apart, it looks like we planned it that way, but we definitely didn't. <laughs> They're 19 months and 22 months apart, so um, that's me as a mom. Um, before that, I was married for 11 years, and um, I'm widowed now for 18 months. So, wow, 18 um, months. Wow. Yeah, when you say it in months, I counted it up the other day, and I was like, kind of like feel like that new mom who like tells her child's age in months, you know, <laughs> like it doesn't seem as old. They don't yeah. want to say two years, but. Yeah, so 18 months, not too long. Probably a few years ago, six years ago, I started teaching as a classroom teacher. And so I teach fourth grade at a school here in Baton Rouge. And yeah. So how are you juggling it? What's it like being in this new season for you? Um, I honestly can say that I'm not juggling at all. <laughs> I, it's, yeah, I can It's a struggle, I, I think. Life. Yeah, a lot of days it feels like we're on the struggle bus. Yeah. But um, no, it, it constantly just feels like one area has to slack. Like right. the kids are going to be taken care of. That's kind of the given. I'm going to give them my attention. Um, and so either my house is moderately clean, or I've got um, you know dinner planned and cooked and groceries in my house, or I'm being a good employee and like putting in extra work hours. But like doing all of those things, I just haven't quite mastered that balance yet. Kevin and I have a, a great relationship um, because we both work. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really requires both of us to pitch in. Mm -hmm. at different times and do different things. Yeah. Um, we also have found, uh, recently moving here, we've already found some great mom friends that are willing to pick up after school if there's a conflict um, and to really just support um, awesome. in that manner. And um, as you mentioned, I, I travel quite a bit and, um, and so I don't have the opportunity to be at every one of the girls' events. Mm -hmm. And so what's worked for us is every semester I sit down with them and say, okay, what are your top three things that you don't want me to miss awesome. and that way I know what's important to them and I make sure that I'm at those events and they know that any other ones that I can be at I, I'll be there yeah but uh, but that way we have that connection and they know um, yeah. that I, I'm gonna be there yeah and I think one thing that's just recent in my life is the ability to say no mm -hmm. I like always I mean growing up I it was an issue like really early in our marriage it was an issue that I would tell everyone yes mm -hmm. and I, I was such a people pleaser yeah. you know and that was really why I was kind of doing that but now I'm like you know what it's just me right so I'm completely fine with right. saying no or just not going somewhere and right. just limiting it to what I can handle or what I might feel is important for each kid you know right. to do I just I'm I think that's huge I kind of don't want to feel that pressure of being right. at everybody's birthday party right. even though we love them like right. we'll send a gift but right. we're not going to stress ourselves out to go to all these right. things so as moms, um, we all find ourselves in different seasons. And I wanted to kind of cover a spectrum of seasons between the four of us. Now, this doesn't cover everything. Maybe you're, you're parenting adults, your, your, your kids are grown, or maybe you have uh, kids with special needs, or maybe um, you're divorced. You might find yourself in a, uh, a different season, but I think you'll be able to glean something. You know, the seasons vary. You know, we have 
maybe seasons of infertility and then we go into seasons uh, with infants and seasons with toddlers and elementary and on and on and on and um, seasons where we're single parenting or where we're not but God is in the middle of it all amen God is right there in the middle of it all, whatever season that we find ourselves in. And he wants to enable us as moms to do this. And we wear this, um, when, really when I was preparing for this message, I felt like God was specifically talking, uh, wanted to speak to this, that we as moms wear all these different hats. You know, in a particular season, in one season, we might be wearing, you know, five different hats. We wear uh, the friend hat and you know, sometimes the friend hat is difficult while you're wearing, while you're doing all the other hats. There have been several instances in my life where I had a friend pull me aside and say, you're not being a good friend right now. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to do everything. And I'm, you know, like, it's hard for me to, you know, but we have these demands and we have, you know, the sports mom hat where we're at baseball practice and cheer practice and, and basketball mom and, and we're their cheerleader and we're their coach and we have the career hat, you know, where we're, we're trying to be a good employer, trying to be a good employer. We have the ministry hat where, hey, hello, we're here, you know, to, to make Jesus known on this earth and, and be a part of God's plan here and we're trying to do that well. How can I love my neighbor? How can I, you know, serve in the church? How can I do that? And then we have the wife hat. How can I be a good wife in the middle of that? Or how can I be a good single mom in the middle of that? Um, it, it looks different. And we wear all these hats, but God is right there in the middle of it. Yeah. And I would say this, that in each of these arenas, that God has called us as individuals. This is moms, dads, singles, whoever you are, that God has called us in whatever season we find ourselves. He's called us to be image bearers of Christ. And he's called us to be proclaimers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is our number one goal. And it's our number one aim. Um, Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 9, and this is the second half of 22 and 23. He says, I've become all things to all men so that by all means, all, all means possible, I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel so that I might share in his blessings. And so we feel that way, right? Sometimes we feel like I'm doing all these things to try and make God known, try to be a good example for the people around me at my workplace, at home, for my kids, in all these arenas. And sometimes in the middle of that, we can feel like we lose our sense of identity. We, see, we lose our sense of value. Well, God, or our sense of God-given purpose. So God, while I'm doing all these things for everybody else, what is it that, who is it that I'm supposed to be? Like, what is it that I'm really supposed to do? And who, who am I in the middle of this? And so this is the, the most important thing that you can take away from today is this fact that as believers in Jesus, before we're anything else, before we put on any other hat, that we are a child of God first, that every mother is first a daughter. And if we don't come to that realization, if we don't put on that perspective on a daily basis, everything else, it, it won't go the way it's supposed to go. And we won't walk in the potential that God has for us. Um, Ephesians 6, it talks about the armor of God, and it says all these things that we should put on to protect ourselves and to live this life powerfully and effectively. It talks about the weapon that we have in our hand. But one of the things that it talks about is the helmet of salvation, that God has given this, this helmet to cover our mind. And really what I believe it is, is it's a new perspective, that God has given us um, a, the perspective that we are redeemed, that there's grace for us, that we're walking in grace, that we're no longer who we used to be, this perspective that we've been made righteous, and that if we will begin with that, this perspective that we are God's child first, that it'll make all the difference in the world. A commentator said this about the helmet of salvation. It says, the assurance of salvation is our impenetrable defense against anything the enemy throws at us. Salvation is not limited to a one-time act or, a, or of the past or even a future hope. God's salvation is ongoing, each, is an ongoing eternal state that his children enjoy in the present. It's a daily protection and deliverance from our sinful nature and from Satan's schemes. And so God 
wants us to put on that helmet of salvation, to put on that perspective before we put on anything else, but put, before we put on the career hat or the friend hat or the ministry hat or the wife hat or any of these things, that he wants us to put on that helmet of salvation, that understanding that we are his, that we, that we are redeemed, that um, we're walking in grace and that we have um, the power of his spirit to enable us to live out this life effectively. Galatians 3 talks about it this way in verse 26 and 27. It says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ like a garment. And I love that um, visual of that as believers that we put on Christ. But I know I'm not the only one that sometimes walks out the door and forgets to put on Christ, you know? Sometimes we walk out the door and we forget to, to put on Christ, that he's available, his presence is available, his righteousness has been given to us, that we can walk and live our life clothed in him. Um, so how do we do that? Practically, how we do that, and my friends are gonna share with you how they do it, but for me, it's just simple steps. It's simple decisions that at the beginning of the day, I, I did this, that my phone, I don't know about you, but my phone is always there. It's my alarm clock. It's right next to my bed. I, you know, I try to mute it or take it away at meal times and, and times when we're spending with our kids or when Josh and I are on a date night, those kind of things. But other than that, it is there. It is ever present help in time of need. No. no. <laughs> but... God, so what I've had to do is in order to make, to put God first and to gain the right perspective first, before I go on Instagram, before I read my emails, before I read any text messages, before the drama of the day hits me in the face, that I put just something simple on my home screen. Uh, before I even open it, it just says who I am and who I want to be. And it, and it reminds me to thank God first that I'm his first. And it's little steps like that that, that help us to, to put on the perspective of Christ, to put on the helmet of, of salvation. So why don't you take a look at how, what my friends do. As moms, we wear all these different hats, you know, and, and sometimes it's just a couple hats at the same time, but sometimes the seasons, there's quite a few. And, um, and I just wanted to convey the importance of, of being clothed in Christ first, putting on that daughter of God hat first and how that impacts everything else. So uh, what, what are some ways that you practically do that? What does that look like for you? I think for me, um, spending a lot of time in prayer uh, on my commute, you know, just mm -hmm. praying that I see people the way that God sees them, yeah. um, that my day is filled with grace and um, just being willing to hear His voice. Some of the other things that I do, uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts, mm -hmm. again, with my, my commute, um, I, I, I try to podcasts. plug in, yeah, yeah to, to hear from other teachers and preachers mm -hmm. and um, just to, to, to hear God's word in, yeah. in different ways is, is really meaningful to me. Yeah. Putting God first, you know, mm -hmm. on a daily basis, mm -hmm. it's almost, it's like, not like it's a good idea, but like for my sanity, right? What does that look like for you? How, how do you do that on a daily basis? Yeah, it's something I like, like it's a decision you have to make every day. Cause mm -hmm. most mornings I'm tired. I've been up feeding Maggie and, um, Gosh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know, the days are full and tiring. Um, and so most mornings I just kind of want to stay in bed as long as possible. Right. Like I do not want to get out of bed right. until I'm needed. Like, like yeah. when Ryan's walking out the door, both kids are awake and needing me. Um, but I've just found that when I can take the time to like get up and get some quiet time by myself, mm -hmm. spend some time in the Word, spend some time in prayer, it really, I end up feeling more rested and have more energy than if I would have just gotten that extra 30 or 45 yeah. minutes of sleep. Um, it's really become an important part of my, my day and my sanity. Yeah. That time I spend in the morning and it kind of sets me up for the rest of the day to remember to lean on him mm -hmm. instead of my own strengths. I mean, yeah. when we're having a hard time, when Cindy doesn't take a nap or when Maggie's right. been fussy all day, um, my instinct is to feel angry and frustrated and, and trapped in this right. life I've had right now. Um, but when I can 
focus on him and the, the blessings he's given me that I have these two beautiful children yeah. that I get to spend my days with yeah. um, and just kind of have that posture of gratitude for that and um, can lean on him for patience and strength and energy that I just don't have on my own and just knowing that I'm that I'm not enough and I don't have to be yeah. and it's and it's better that I'm not I you know, know. it's oh, like I'm so, so much better with him than I am on my own yeah um, and so just feeling comforted by that and not um, not like I have to carry it all on my shoulders because I that can't. Is, that's so good. I love worship. Yeah. You know, I'm not the best singer. My kids will tell me that. <laughs> I wish I had your anointing, but um, I wake up just like with a worship song in my heart that I've like listened to like maybe that week and it's almost like God reminds me of that and not like out loud, but just in my heart, I wake up singing that and yeah. it's in my mind. And then, you know, if I have the chance to get a cup of coffee and sit down, you know, read a devotional, read the book that I'm reading, you know, meditate on a scripture. I love that. I love that. I think that's so, so good and so key to putting on that helmet of salvation. We, and we look, we live in this culture that is struggling for spiritual identity. They're, they're struggling for identity in general. And we live in a very confused society. I was, Judah does this thing where he says, hey Siri, play this song. And so I would just be in the middle of listening to what I want and he doesn't like it. So he'll say, hey Siri, play Spider-Man. And so, uh, play the Spider-Man soundtrack. So, so he did that the other day, and we were just in the car. His song came. The song came on, and I just thought it was just really interesting and and just telling about culture today. And the the lyrics were, "I feel like a stranger to myself. Some days I look in mirrors and wonder who's that man." And I thought that's really what where culture is and that's really where people we find the people around us that we don't know who we are we feel like who am i i look in the mirror i'm i'm doing this and i'm doing that but who am i really and we as believers in jesus can be extenders of hope and then extenders of truth and say hey let me tell you who you are you are created to be a son and a daughter of god you have a divine purpose but if we are struggling for our own spiritual identity, if we don't have the mind of Christ, if we are not taking the position of being a son or a daughter first, then how can we then impart that to the people around us? How can we impart that to our kids? And so I just want to encourage you, you know, that God has, we may not know what our, who our kids are going to marry or what career path they're going to take, what college they're going to go to. Um, but at the same time, God has anointed us to be a prophetic voice in the lives of our kids, that we can speak purpose, that we can speak hope, that we can speak truth. And while we don't know the specifics, we don't know exactly what they're going to do, we do know what kind of person he wants them to be. And we can encourage them in the kind of person that he created them to be. And we can be that voice of hope and really impart that. But oft oftentimes, I think, instead of imparting faith, that we impart our fears and we can impart our insecurities into our kids, that we make this impartation of frustration or anxiety or make this impartation of jealousy or greed. And of course, it's not intentional. I wouldn't think it would be. It's not intentional. But we're allowing, we allow these things to be so much bigger than, than our faith. But God is calling us as parents, as people, as individuals, it doesn't matter where you are, to allow your faith to be louder, to allow your faith to be bigger and stronger so that the investment that you make in the people around you is one that's significant, one that's eternal, one that actually stirs up the gifting is inside of the people around us, ones that, uh, you know, an investment that draws the potential out of the people around us and encourages them to be God's best, to, to follow God's best plan for their life. That's who we can be. That's the impact and the influence that we can make on the people around us, especially our kids. Kids. We have this great opportunity to make this mark on their lives and say, I don't know how it's all going to play out, but I see potential in you. I see purpose in you. I see value in you. And But this is a funny thing happened the other day. We were at Judah's baseball game, and um, we were being ruled by our insecurities for him. So he was on second base, and I was terrified that he was going to run the wrong way at the wrong time. 
And so my mom and I are watching this game, and Josh is um, one of the coaches on the field, and Judah's on second base, and, and I'm like, oh my gosh, does he know when to run? Does he know where to run? And I'm just thinking these thoughts over and over again. I'm kind of vocalizing them a little bit to my mom. And, um, and my mom starts saying, Judah! She's yelling at him, like, completely across the field. Judah, go this way! And so Judah, it is not the right time. She meant go this way when the batter hits the ball. Then you run and go that way. Because there's no stealing happening in, in T-ball baseball yet. So she's saying, go this way. And so Judah just goes for it. And then, of course, all the other coaches are like, go back, go back. And so, but what happened in that moment was we were so ruled by our, our insecurities for our kids, for, for Judah, for Judah, that we caused him, we encouraged him to make a misstep. He probably would have been fine. His coaches had told him what to do. He would have ran when he was supposed to run. But because of our own insecurity for him, we, we encouraged him to do actually the wrong thing, the thing that we were hoping he would he wouldn't do. And oftentimes as parents, we find ourselves doing this. We see these, um, these, these struggles in our kids' lives. We see that there's these, these hang-ups or these weaknesses or these, these areas that are of challenge for them. And instead of encouraging them in what they can do, instead of highlighting the greatness in them, we, we're like, don't do this. Or, or we, we focus and we harp on those things on those, um, those things that they know is a struggle. They already know that. They're already pretty self-aware. And so I just want, I wanna encourage you as parents, as moms, and I'm speaking to myself in this, to say, hey, let's let our faith for our kids be louder than everything else. Let, let's let um, the potential that we speak and the love and the hope that we speak over them be the dominant voice that we speak over our kids so that the impartation that we make is one of faith um, and one of loving God and trusting God and not one of fear. That's right. That's right. That's um, I think we all as parents have these insecurities. We have insecurities, our own insecurities. As people, we have our own insecurities. Um, and then we have insecurities for the people around us. And these things can over, only be overcome through prayer. And so for me, there's these things that I'm like, God, you know, in this I wish I was more of this. So for me, let me just be completely honest. I was not the most maternal person by nature. So I was not um, your babysitter. You know, I didn't do that. I didn't even, was not interested in babysitting kids. And so I remember early on, um, a fear of mine was, will I be motherly enough? And that's still an ongoing thought. I love my kids to pieces, but there's still this insecurity that I'm not nurturing enough or I need to be more nurturing. And so we all have these things that can be, that the enemy wants to use to prevent us to fulfilling the, the fulfilling the plan of God for us for our lives um, and so that's mine but I wanted you to take a look at but we have to pray we have to pray to overcome these things prayer is a necessary weapon to overcoming our insecurity so I wanted you to take a look at um, these awesome moms and what they had to say about that <laughs> What are your prayers right now? What are you praying over your kids? And even um, even for yourself, what are you praying, you know, God, help me in this? Um, for my children, you know, they're so young. It's like my, my biggest prayer is just that they would grow up to love God and to want to serve them with their lives. And yeah. that, um, you know, that they would find friends and be in the right school, like all those um, things that feel big. Yeah. Um, but really just that they would see God's love through our, my husband and I's love for them and our, how we interact with each other and how we interact with our community and our church. Like, I just want them yeah. to see that, um, yeah. to see the love that God has for them. Um, and for myself, it's constantly just, you know, I pray for patience, pray for compassion for my kids. Sleep. Pray. <laughs> yes. And honestly, like every night, please let no sleep right. well. Like, please, you know, yeah, let us get Everything's a, better. Everything is easier <laughs> when, you're, when you're rested, for sure. Praying a lot for good, solid friends. Um, you know, being new to the area, uh, wanting them to have uh, those great peer connections and friends that can pour into them um, and be that light. Yeah. Um, and, and then also for them to uh, reach beyond that circle and to find friends who don't know Christ 
and to be able to share their faith with them. That's so great. Um, and, and so we, we pray that a lot. And a, uh, another prayer that, that we pray that a friend told me once is, particularly with your teenagers, you pray that if they go astray, they get caught quickly. Mm -hmm. And so that they, um, yes. that sin yes. gets discovered yes. very quickly and yes. you can correct them without yeah. it being um, right. just really a big ordeal. Yeah. As, as a mom, what are your biggest insecurities? We all have these things that we're like, I wish I was could do this better, or I was more this and I was more that. What is it for you? I think for me it's, um, being there more, um, you know, because because I travel, um, I I fear that my girls are going to miss a part of me, or I'm going to miss sharing something with them, um, and you know, little things that I don't cook, so I don't share that with them, and you know, just making sure that um, that I have those connections with them, and and really, you know, we talked about when we don't get it right. My biggest fear is those are the moments that they're going to remember, not mm. all of the good moments. Yeah. You know, all of the times that I did get it right, right. but they're they're going to hold on to right. um, to when I blew it. I think it's changed. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think like honestly, my biggest fear now is that um, I'll be able to do it. You know, um, even though I know I'm not alone, obviously. You still feel like that, you know, like nights that Joseph will say, like, just the other night, he was like, um, you know, we went bowling the other day and there was a dad and a little boy bowling. And he was like, mom, that really hurt my heart and I'm really jealous, you know? And like being able to like handle those moments, you know, with him, yeah. I just sometimes, I'm scared, yeah. you know? I, I walk and just think like, am I gonna be able to take my kids through this, you know, this tragedy for one, but then also like, do I have what it takes to raise them into the people that they're supposed to be, you know? Yeah. Yes. I know. <laughs> I yes. know, like I do know, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, but yeah, that but I know it's true. real. The feeling of it is real, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's tough, mm -hmm. you know? So we all have these things. We all have these, these prayers and these insecurities, but God is right in the middle of that. And you know what? We are each graced to run the race that we have, that he set before us. Each one of us have a race. There's this plan of, there's this life right before us. Um, and God has graced each and, uh, each and every one of us uniquely to run that race, to walk that path, to take that journey. And look, by the power, by the empowerment of his spirit, you can do it. You will do it. And by God's grace, you are gonna finish well. You're gonna finish well. If you just stay, if you just hold on, if you just stay the course, if you just keep your eyes on Jesus, if you just keep on putting on that helmet of salvation, if you keep on telling yourself who you are in him, you're going to finish well. Yeah. But look, we can't do this by ourselves. And we weren't meant to do this by ourselves. That's why God gives us his spirit and and and. As Lanyap, he gives us the body of believers. He gives us the church so that we can look to the left and to the right of us and say, and see another person who's in the, th in the thick of it also and say, let me link arms with you and let's do this together. We can look at somebody who's just gone, is just a little bit further than us in life and we can say, hey, can you help me through this? Like, this is what I'm navigating and I'm not sure what to do and I'm not sure what the proper response is. I'm not sure what decision to make, but can you give me some wisdom? Can you tell me how you went through this? How did you get through this? And that's what the body of believers is meant to be. It's meant to be this family of encouraging uh, of encouragement that we we help each other through every season and not just motherhood not just fatherhood but through every season through every circumstance through the loss of a job through the uh, deciding what career path you want to take all these things there's so many things that we need to look to the right and to the left of us and say I love how Devin said the church she, she's gonna she, actually she didn't say it yet because I'm about to show the video but she says something really powerful about the church that 
it can be a powerful force. It's meant to be a powerful force in our life, but we have to let it. We have to invite. We have to invite those voices. People aren't gonna impose their opinions on you, and if they do, they're probably not the best people to have in your life, but if we will, as a body of believers, welcome those, that there's so much strength that can be gleaned from that. So much. So for me, I'll tell you what this looked like. There's no way on this planet that we would have been able to navigate being foster parents into adoption. And even just this whole season without the strength and the support of the church. We had people who were praying for us, that were believing with us, that were, you know, wiping the tears from my eyes. There were people, believers in the church that just never let go. And they checked on us to see how we were doing. And, and even though we didn't, I didn't give birth to a baby, when I took in Judah, there were presents stacked outside of my home down the pathway of baby gifts for us things like that. That's what the church is meant to do, and that's what the church will be if you invite it to be a part of your life. It makes all the difference. And so I wanted you to hear from them just one more time to see what the church means to them. What part has the church played or, or the community of believers played in in just being a mom and, and parenting well, even for you and Kevin, you know, mm -hmm. um, as parents, how, how has that played out? I think it is so very important. Um, it, little things like, okay, please tell me I'm not crazy that my right. kid did this. Right. And, and the church will, friends will say, oh, that's normal. That right. It, every 11-year-old every does yes. that. And you're like, oh, oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Um, but it's also getting other moms and dads and, 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 and youth workers pouring into your kids mm -hmm. and being another voice so that they don't think that, uh, you know, religion is just something that my, my parents did, right. but that their folks' faith is right. real and personal. And for them to see that in other people uh, will really bring it home to them and yeah. put it and, and grow that in their hearts. I mean, I think the church can, can play a huge role when we let it. I think, um, that takes authenticity, you know, it takes being vulnerable with people, yeah. it takes telling them the areas we're struggling in, um, whether it's practically or spiritually, but I right. think when you do share those things with others, um, that you have prayer partners, that you have people that can step in and help when, mm -hmm. when you need it, and I've leaned on people in our church for all of those things, yeah. um, so it, it can play a huge helping role um, when yeah. we kind of let our guard down and, yeah. and allow those in our community to help. I know that there are mornings that I just like, I can't wait to get to church, you know, just because I've kind of run out, mm -hmm. you know, like run out of patience, run out of me, right. you know, and I just need that corporate setting, just like a Sunday morning, you know, need a corporate setting to like, just let it all out or be refilled or just have fresh vision because right. you can, you know, something that I miss is I no longer have someone to bounce anything off of. You know, like constantly we were sharpening each other and I, I had someone to tell me, well, I know how you feel, but, you know, or to encourage me or just anything. Right. You know, I don't have that person. And so the church, I mean, is everything and and friendships that are grounded in Christ to yes. sharpen me and something that Steve and I would always say is like Lord let us like sort of see how other people view our kids mm -hmm. you know like I don't want to be so biased and so right. blinded to the fact that I love them so much and I think that they're the best at everything right you know right like let me see their blind spots mm -hmm. too and if you don't invite people in you don't have that Sure. And the church is like the perfect place for it, you know, like, I mean, I feel like, you know, even our friendship together, like you being led by the Holy Spirit, I would welcome that and love that, you know, but, but also, you know, just support, you know, I mean, practical support. There's been people that have come and like done laundry or right. changed, you know, sheets and done dishes and babysat and... 
I don't know what I would have done without those people. That's awesome. Well, I just, I'm so glad we had this conversation today. And um, I mean, there was just a wealth of wisdom. So I hope that, that they're listening today because I know that they're going to receive something. So thank you so much, Devin. Thanks for letting me be a part of it. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. I'm so grateful that they decided to share their time with me and hearts and stories with me. Um, and I hope it, it encouraged you. I just wanted to speak to one more thing. And there's a, a verse in Jeremiah 1.5, and it says this. It says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart, and I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. That before we were born, God had a purpose for us. He had a divine purpose for us. Um, and he had set us apart for his use. And I just want you to know... Um, just at, as moms, that God is in this. He is with you. He is walking with you, that you're not alone. And there's a, a little something that I want to read to you that is part of, like, my mantra for the day. And this is not, like, um, just positive confession, but it's really just a profession of faith that I, I speak on a daily basis. But before I read that, and you guys, you, you probably have one either on your seat or near you. I'm going to read it in a second. But I want to speak, before I read that, I just wanted to speak to those of you who are moms in waiting and say that I want you to know that God is in the waiting I never, I don't think I ever sensed the, the power and the presence of God more than in my waiting season while I was waiting on the promise that God is in the waiting and that there's, um, there's purpose and there's, there's blessing that precedes the promise. So the blessing is not just when you get the child, but there's blessing that precedes the prom promise. There's something that God is doing that he's, he's, um, he's doing in you and doing through you and, there's, and your life is producing fruit. Even though you don't have the fruit of a child yet, your life is still bearing fruit and it's still an encouragement and it's still an impact to the people around you if you'll let it be. He wants to do that through you. And also know that God is so faithful to fulfill his promises. And I don't know what that looks like for you. It might look different than it does for somebody else. But God is faithful to his promises. And at just the right time, he will complete. He will fulfill it. If you just hold on, just hold on and keep believing that he will do that for you. So let me just read this to you. Um, and this applies to anyone. This is It says mom on the top of it. But this is not just, this doesn't just apply to moms. And so... I started doing this probably about six months ago as kind of the same thing, a way to, to start off my day and just, um, the enemy will whisper lies to us. How many of you know that? Throughout the day, it's like an ongoing thing. And so for me, it's just a decision to start my day off with um, a positive profession of faith and who I am in Christ and who he wants me to be. And so this is what it says. It says, you are God's masterpiece. So it's, it's like you're reading this to yourself. I'm reading this to you. You are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do the good works that he prepared in advance for you to do. By his power, you will leave no words unsaid, no deeds undone, no hope unshared. Your faith moves mountains. Your prayers calm storms. Your words give life. Your hands bring healing. Your feet delivers the good news that Christ is risen and he's coming back again. Your life is too valuable. Your calling too great and your God too good to waste your life on things that don't last. You are empowered by God's spirit, trained by his word, and tried by fire. Trials cannot stop you. People cannot break you. Money cannot buy you. Haters cannot silence you. And demons cannot defeat you because you are graced to run this race. So wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you find yourself, man, woman, child, you are graced to run this race. And God has a divine plan for your life. So Josh, once you come up, and we just want to speak a blessing over moms and families this morning as we close. Man, wasn't that a fantastic word? Gosh. Such a great word. So I know there, there might be some, um, there, there could be kind of two things that we want to be aware of during Mother's Day is that you might be, like Brooke said, 
praying for that blessing. But you also might have a bad relationship with your mom, or maybe you're a mom that has a bad relationship with your kids, and we just want to pray that God would just be right where you are right now, whether you are the mom or you or, or, or you um, wish you had a relationship with your mom, whatever that story is. So why don't we just, let's just spend a little bit of time in God's presence to just ask him to do a work in us. Lord, I thank you so much that you see every story. Lord, you know every single story in the room. You know the longing, you know the desire for uh, that child, Lord, and those who have Maybe they've tried or maybe, um, maybe they're not even married yet. They're single and they long to be a mom one day. Lord, I just pray that you would be in the middle of that. Lord, the things that have not happened yet, we pray that right now you would do the work in, in every person who longs, in every person who desires, in every person who is praying for the promise. We pray that you would give patience. And Lord, you would do the work that needs to be done right now in preparation. And Lord, we do pray, Lord, that that promise would come to completion soon. Lord, you know every relationship that is broken, every relationship with mother, others that needs to be restored, whether it's the child that's here or the mom that's here, maybe it's both. Lord, I pray that there would be restoration and you would rebuild what the enemy has tried to destroy. Lord, we thank you that you are you are faithful and we thank you for the blessing of moms in this room. We pray that every mom that's represented here and Lord, we just pray that you would bless them today. Lord, let them realize that they are loved and valued in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you for coming for Mother's Day. What a fantastic day. Um, one thing that I wanted to let you guys know about before you take off is if you are going to either Mexico or Albania next Sunday, we have a mission trip meeting right after our worship experience, and we're going to be meet, all meeting together and going over uh, both of those trips. And one last thing, we have a gift for all the ladies in the house, moms or not moms, we have a gift for you as you walk in. Our kids are ready to deliver it to you. And also, if you want to see the full vi um, interviews um, that I had with each of these women, those will be available on our YouTube page and on Facebook as well. Yeah, and if you came ready to give today, you're part of the church and you want to give, um, you, we made that really easy for you. You can give online at anchorchapel.com or in the give boxes on the way out, or if you prefer to do it by text, then you can give uh, that way as well. So thank you guys for being here. Y'all have a fantastic day. See y'all next week.